Welcome to the closing ceremony of the Research and Creativity Convention. We'd like to remind you at this time, if you haven't done so already, to please download the RCC app by going to AUC Conferences. From this app, you will be able to ask questions of the keynote speaker and interact with other users of the app. I'd now like to invite Dr. Gadir Hashimi, Dean of Undergraduate Studies and Director of Core Curriculum, to give an overview of our first activity, the Faculty Research Pitch Competition. Please welcome Dr. Gadir Hashimi. Thank you for joining us for the final round of the Faculty Research Pitch, which celebrates innovation and creativity, two of the central values of this great liberal arts institution. In this competition, AUC faculty from all schools come together to share their research with a wider non-specialized audience in a challenging communication activity. Traditionally, we seek to discuss the details of our research outcomes exclusively with peers from our own disciplines. In today's interconnected world, where disciplinary boundaries are quickly giving way to integration and intersection, it is vital that our capacity to communicate our research to those outside of our labs, our studios, and our immediate communities also be a measure for the impact of our findings. A pitch is a brief, comprehensive talk used to persuade an audience of the value of a project or an idea in an engaging way that generates the listener's interest. In the research pitch, the presenter will tell us about their research idea and why it is important. The challenge is to talk about complex and specialized research questions and findings in a way that is understandable and appealing to this diverse audience from different disciplines. This needs to be done in no longer than three minutes. On Tuesday, in round one of the research pitch, 19 of our distinguished colleagues talked about exciting scientific breakthroughs, analyses of enduring questions in policy, explorations and insights into human behavior, and unique perspectives in artistic works. A panel of judges selected eight finalists who will be competing today in the, first, in the final round of the pitch. Instead of judges, today we will ask you, the audience, to vote for the winners. As you listen to the presentations, please think about the one that you believe communicates the purpose and the impact of the research most effectively and does this in a most engaging way. Uh, can I get the screen to, uh, uh, there are instructions. Can the, oh, okay. Okay. No, no. Thank you. So if you please look at the screen, what you need to be thinking about as you listen to each of the speakers is to select one speaker who has communicated the strongest content and delivery. Content means what are they saying? What is the talk about? If the presenter commu communicates this, this technical topic to an unspecialized audience, effectively and explains to you why it is important or relevant, you should consider voting for them. Delivery is how the talk is given. It's engaging, it's interesting, your mind does not wonder as the speaker is speaking and the speaker does not exceed three minutes. So these are the two criteria that I will ask you to think about as you view each of the eight presentations. We've set up a system where you will be asked to vote on your phone or device, and the results will appear to the administrators um, immediately. After the presentations are completed, we will ask you, we will share with you instructions for voting. So let's take a moment to make a prayer that the technology works. Please enjoy this celebration of outstanding scholarship in this exciting research storytelling event.
Our first presenter is Dr. Doris Jones from the Department of Rhetoric and Composition in the Academy of Liberal Arts. Her research, Big Questions, Big Data, Wicked Problems equals Quantitative Reasoning. Is there a correlation between women's empowerment, water security, environmental protection, and peace? Dr. Wangari Mathai proved that there is. In 2004, she won the Nobel Prize for Peace because she was able to improve and inform and encourage the women and men in her communities throughout Kenya to plant trees. But what does the planting of trees have to do with water security? And more specifically, what does the planting of trees have to do with women's empowerment? Women are primarily responsible for collecting water to provide for the security and feeding of their families. This responsibility often comes at the risk of bodily harm and sometimes even death. This phenomena is particularly poignant throughout Sub-Saharan Africa. Dr. Mathai recognized that women were cutting down trees also to fuel, to add fuel to the water and to cook the food that they're responsible for preparing. This created a zero-sum gain. And what did she find? That the cutting down of trees was in fact eroding the soil. And soil erosion was also causing food not to grow. This zero-sum gain further caused Dr. Mathai to encourage women to create what is now known as the Green Belt Movement that lives well beyond her death that we must find ways to ensure that women are able to protect themselves, to break vicious cycles of poverty by creating opportunities for life. During this international decade for water action, the United Nations has found that more than half of the world's women in the developing world are spending 200 million hours every day to collect water. You know what that equals? That's 8.3 million days. And it also equals 22,000 years. This data is staggering. And the data is continuing to grow. And how do we go about understanding these vast quantities of data? We must utilize quantitative reasoning, which allows us to use higher ordered thinking while combining basic mathematics with quantitatively reasoned statistical skills. But even these skills are not enough. We must also utilize grassroots initiatives that have been developed by Dr. Mathai to allow everyone to recognize that access to water is also a human right, but most importantly, access to water is a form of peace. Thank you. Our next presenter, Dr. Ahmed Abdel Latif from the Department of Biology from the School of Sciences and Engineering. His topic, Herbal Remedies for Chronic Skin Ulcers. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Diabetes is a common household disease nowadays, and today uh, we are going to add some spices on that disease. We are actually going to do it literally. We are using, in uh, the project that we are presenting today, common household spices that are used in cooking because of their criteria that they possess. They have an anti-inflammatory activity, antibacterial activity, and they promote wound healing. Pressure ulcers and diabetes foot infection are one of the most common complications of this chronic disease we call diabetes. It's a very complex disease in its pathology, and it causes severe healthcare burden in both developed and underdeveloped countries. The abuse of commonly available antibiotics on the market today caused a severe problem, which is bacteria resistance. One goal is to try to find an alternative source that comes from the Egyptian 
market, the Egyptian environment, as well as something that the common user can use without very huge complications of bacteria resistance or side effects of the drug. We have used common herbal uh, products like curcumin, oregano, fenugreek. All of these are very commonly used and commonly available products in the market. What we are trying to do is introduce them both as a local treatment for ulcers and skin infections in diabetic patients, as well as using them as an oral approach to enhance blood glucose control in these patients, with a very long-term goal to improve blood glucose level, reduce diabetic complications, as well as improve the quality of life for people who have diabetic infection, which unfortunately in most cases end with amputation, which is usually not the end of the story. It is in most cases the beginning of the story because one amputation leads to another and another and another and the patient becomes totally bedridden, which even complicates things even more to that patient. So to sum it up, we are targeting diabetes, which is a very complex disease with a unique, very innovative solution using common herbal treatments that are available in the Egyptian markets to hopefully improve the quality of life for these people. Thank you very much. Our next presenter, Dr. Hisham Denena from the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication from the School of Global Affairs and Public Policy. His topic, the effect of entrepreneurial and market orientation on firm performance, the case of SMEs in Egypt. Thank you. Actually, uh, the business world we live in today is described as the VOCA world. The VOCA actually is an abbreviation of four words that says we're living in a world that's full of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Actually, this kind of business environment makes it very challenging for businesses to perform and to sur even survive in the future. There is a study actually that was done by McKinsey that talks that over the coming few years because of the industry 4.0 or the fourth industrial revolution, that the world actually will have to displace more than 800 million jobs between now and 2030. The one entities or the entities that have to really bear the burden to try to keep social stability are small and medium enterprises. That was the main reason why we were very interested in this research. How can small and medium enterprises that are considered as the engine of growth for a lot of economies like Egypt really thrive and even uh, work well in this kind of environment? Egypt has 2.5 million small and medium enterprises that represent 99% of the businesses in Egypt and they actually employ 75% of the workforce in Egypt. So it's a very important part for us to know how can these small and medium enterprises be healthy. We conducted a comprehensive research. Actually, this research tried to identify the main drivers of the performance of SMEs. We found that there are two main things, something called the entrepreneurship orientation of the owner and the market orientation of the management team. Our research was really trying to find how can we combine these two things together to improve the performance of SMEs. We actually proved in this research through quantitative and qualitative study that covered 402 firms in Egypt in 12 different governorates that combining these two things together can improve the performance of firms between 35 to 40 percent. In addition, we developed a very comprehensive model to measure the performance of SMEs based on sustainable, not only short-term financial results, but also long-term success of the firm. We believe that this research can help Egyptian companies perform better in the future, and I will end with a very interesting quote that I think works well for Egyptian firms. It's either you grow fast or die slow. And I hope that our research will help these companies to continue to grow. Thank you very much. Our next presenter is Dr. Mohi Mansour from the Department of Mechanical Engineering from the School of Sciences and Engineering. 
His topic, alternative renewable fuels, production using second generation crops and agricultural waste and testing using new combustion systems. Okay, let me start by saying we have a fact that our daily use of energy, 80% of that comes from burning fossil fuels. When you burn fossil fuels, we produce pollutants and then we harm the environment. Although these actually fossil fuels will not last forever, it has certain lifetime reserve in, the, in our uh, actual plant and this is expected to last for about five to 10 decades. It depends on our consumption rate. So we actually looking for alternative type of renewable fuels that can replace these kind of fuels. We started by looking at our resources in Egypt and worldwide. And in Egypt, as you all know, that we are facing big problem by burning agriculture waste in open area. And this burning causing the black cloud smoke in October. And this is actually a waste of a lot of energy in the atmosphere. So can we convert that into useful type of energy? Yes, we can. We looked at how can we convert this agriculture waste into useful gas, and we did that using a technique called gasifier. By gasification with partial oxidation of this waste, then we can convert that to gas. This gas can be used to drive some engines and can also be used for household and can be used for many other applications. Actually, same gas is a product, can also have some other byproducts, which is actually the, uh, some fertilizers that can be used also for uh, fertilization of the soil. This actually amount of agriculture waste and solid waste in Egypt is about 40 million tons of agriculture waste and about 100 million tons of solid waste. So this is a very big resource for energy in the future. So we need the fuel sustainable for our future and also we need the fuel that produce less pollutants. Uh, the second type of fuel we went through is actually from the uh, crops. We searched in Egypt for different types of crops. We found actually the best crops is actually Jatrova, from which we can actually generate biodiesel, and we did that. And actually we generated the biodiesel and we used it in engine, and the engine did work very nicely and efficiently, and even the, le the level of pollution is less. And we also tried to accelerate the production rate of biogas, for other applications and we could use nanotechnology for improving the production rate of biogas and that also helps. Out of that we got the gas and then we started to do some research on the best efficient use of this. Now I would like to share my dream with you that actually my dream is to see Egypt, the farmers of Egypt, to produce energy and food for us. Thank you very much. Please note the poll is not yet active, but it will be active by the time of the last presentation. Our next presenter, um, okay, I'm sorry, what's his name? What's his name? Hassan or John? Okay. Our next presenter. John Hoey from Faculty of the Arts from the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. His topic, Why We Feel What We See, Visual Systems as Precursors to Racism. Thank you. Good afternoon, AUC. Um, my name is John, and I'm here to talk to you about a very dangerous word, racism. And as I say that, I am perfectly aware of who I am and what I look like standing in front of you. I've worked in the arts most of my life. I've had the ability to travel the world working as a designer for film and theater, and I've observed how people from all over the world react to the same visual stimuli. And what I've noticed is that despite individual and regional differences in how we see things, we as humans all perceive things in exactly the same way. So I started doing some research, and as I looked into what's referred to as the phototransduction process, which is how light meets the eye. 
It's then processed by the rods and the cones, and then interpreted by the brain, and then reinterpreted, and then reinterpreted. And these interpretations start to form a library that governs our reaction to absolutely everything that we see. Now, along some avenues, these reactions become what we refer to as art and culture. But underneath all of this is one very simplistic formula that assigns a natural intrinsic value to light versus dark. This formula and these reactions left unguided and improperly balanced become what we refer to as racism and bias. We as humans all perceive things the same way. This light and dark value association is why there's a difference between how we feel in night and day, how we assign value to certain visual symbols, for me, how I compose more complicated visual compositions, but also how we assess the human form. Now, I'm not one to present a problem without a solution. I really feel that the arts, guided by the findings of psychiatry, psychology, biology, sociology, we can really work together to communicate, to discreetly educate people to make better choices. As great people like Václav Havel and Joe Strummer have said, if we can change the consciousness, we can change the culture. We are at a time period where we can rise above what has gone before and make better choices with the understanding of how we actually see and perceive things. Um, I was going to tell a joke, but I have way too much time for that. Um, but thank you all very much. Thank you. Our next presenter, Dr. Hassan Azazi from the Department of Chemistry from the School of Sciences and Engineering. His topic, Optical Sensors for Detection of Toxic Metals in Water. Thank you. Uh, humans are exposed to toxic metals like lead, mercury, chromium, and cadmium, and so on. We are exposed to toxic metal from air, from water, from food. And we can get this uh, through either skin or by breathing in or by drinking water and so on. Uh, toxic metals, when they enter our bodies, they stay there, cannot be broken down. And they can, they accumulate and they cause lots of problems, including cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, skin problem. But most importantly, they, you, they cause neurological uh, symptoms and at certain concentrations, they can cause death. Uh, children in particular are vulnerable to toxic metal with, with, and they suffer from learning disability, lower RQ, as well as autism. Uh, pregnant women and women in particular have additional source of exposure to toxic metal via cosmetics. Lipstick is rich in red and tens of thousand higher concentration than, uh, than allowed by Environmental Protection Agency and other regulatory bodies. Uh, the problem with cosmetics is that uh, their uh, continuous application may be more than once a day and then the various uh, cosmetics that we use. Uh, then pregnant women can deliver these toxic metals to their babies that, uh, in their wombs. So this is a problem. We need to detect toxic metal. We need to identify which toxic metal we're dealing with because each one can cause, for example, cadmium is famous for causing cancer and can increase the, 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 uh, the, uh, the probability of, of having cancer by the as the concentration increases. So we need to detect toxic metal, know which toxic metal we're dealing with, and then remove them for environment and from our water and so on. We uh, have one of my research team, it's a multidisciplinary research team from chemists, nanotechnology, and engineers, mechatronics, computer science. We developed a system called ToxiSure. This system consists of two components, straps, uh, very similar to pregnancy test, which you can dip in water and they change color. And can tell you, number one, if this water contains toxic metal, and number two, which toxic metal is it? Now, if you know, you need to know the uh, relevant concentration in part per million or part per billion. We have developed a device made of a, a very uh, uh, sensitive 
imaging camera connected to an LCD screen, very similar to the glucometer device that we have at home. You can insert the, the, the strip and can tell you exactly the concentration. This system is patented by the US Patent Office. We have just received the granted patent in January 2019, and also we have several publications. Uh, I'm very proud of this production for two things. Number one, because it's made by a multidisciplinary team from different departments at EUC, and number two, it is made by AUC. I thank the Office of the uh, 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 Vice Provost for Research and Activity for funding our research, and we, we have developed the first prototype, and we hope to move to market. Thank you very much. Our next presenter is Dr. Maya Nicola from the Core Curriculum and the Science and Engineering uh, School as well as the Academy of Liberal Arts. Her topic, Decipher Deciphering the Role of APP. Uh, hello, everyone. First, I would like to start by asking, how many of you here would like to live long enough to see their grandchildren or maybe their grand-grandchildren? Please raise your hands. OK, I see many hands. Now, I'm curious to know, what will you answer when you know that in 60 years from now, you may have very high chances of suffering from Alzheimer's. According to some studies, the risk can reach almost one in two, which means when you are 85 years or older, you may either suffer from Alzheimer's or look after someone who has Alzheimer's. This is scary, I know, but who is at risk? Everyone with a brain is at risk. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Alzheimer's, it is a disease characterized by progressive degenerations of neurons. Neurons are cells in the brain. So this results in cognitive disabilities, behavioral disturbances, and in some cases, neuropsychiatric symptoms. What's more important to know is that, despite the discovery of Alzheimer's disease more than 100 years ago, there is still no cure for it. Why is that? Is it because pharma companies aren't investing enough? Not really, because actually they are pouring a lot of money to develop antibodies that try to reduce the toxic plaques present in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. So what is the problem then? The main problem is we still lack an understanding of the basic molecular and cellular functions of many proteins involved in Alzheimer's. And one of these proteins is APP. During my PhD, I used the brain of the fruit fly to study this protein. And for the ones who are wondering whether the fruit fly has a brain, yes, it does, and it has a complex one too. Now, going back to the results of my PhD, I identified a new function for APP, that it's a receptor. I identified a ligand that binds to this receptor, and I also mapped the domain where this ligand binds. But what I wasn't able to do, or didn't have the time to do, is to look at the outcome of this binding. So in other terms, I wasn't able to ask the so what question. The objective of my research here in AUC is to understand the role of the different domains of APP in a neural development, but more importantly, to understand whether these functions are relevant to the onset of Alzheimer's pathology. Thank you. And now we have Dr. Mahmoud Shaltout from the core curriculum in the Academy of Liberal Arts in the School of Sciences and Engineering. His topic, Investigating Home Environment Influence on Obesity in Urban Egyptian Children. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to start this on a personal note and say the reason I got into obesity research was because I was an overweight teenager and it took me years to lose weight. Um, what made it worse was that I grew up in a very obesogenic environment, which means an environment that's full of fast food and junk food and very little opportunities or encouragement to exercise. Now, obesity, Egypt has one of the highest uh, rates of obesity, adult obesity in the world, and around 10% of Egyptian children are classified as overweight or obese. Now, obesity is not just a problem because of the physiological and the psychological impacts on the person, 
but it also has ramifications on the Soci on society, basically, because of productivity and because of the health care costs uh, associated with obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, etc. Now, my study investigates, uh, it's the first of its kind in Egypt, and it investigates the home environment influence on obesity. Now, what do I mean by the home environment? The home environment is basically divided into two large areas. The physical home environment, which is the availability and accessibility to um, healthy or unhealthy food and opportunities to exercise or the absence of, and the social uh, home environment, which is basically the uh, parental modeling in both eating and exercise, and parental encouragement or practices that either encourage or, or uh, hinder exercise. Now, my research was the first of its kind in Egypt again, and it looks at, it, it attempts to uh, uh, find the uh, significances between various home environment factors and childhood obesity, and it also has a socioeconomic component, which means it looks at uh, differences between different areas, different socioeconomic areas within Cairo. So a very high socioeconomic area versus a very low socioeconomic area. And it also has uh, another very interesting component in that it looks at the uh, perceptions of mothers regarding their children, whether they think their children are overweight or obese, and what they think about their child's eating habits and whether they think eating habits or exercise are important for their child's health. Thank you very much. Thank you, presenters. Now, audience, you will be able to vote for the best presentation by going to slido.com, entering the code AUC, RCC 2019 and entering your vote.
Oh yeah. Oh uh, no. I don't know. Maybe he came back. Okay, the polls are now closed. Thank you all for voting. I'd like to thank the presenters once more for your presentations. And the winners will be announced during the award presentations after the keynote speaker. Our keynote speaker graduated from AUC in 2016 with a Bachelor of Science in Biology and minors in Bioinformatics and Chemistry. Active in research and multiple science festival events across Egypt he presented at our Eureka conference three times and was awarded the Biology Department's Exemplary Student Award in 2015. He was the Vice President of Cosmos Science Radio, which is a channel created to inspire interest in the natural sciences. Partnering with our physics department, the Cosmos Science Radio organized an African Alternative Energy Conference hosting over 150 participants from all over Africa. He is also co-founder and content manager of the National Science Week, that showcases science-inspired events all over Egypt. He's partnered with other universities to organize more than 100 science fairs, science cinemas, book clubs, and writing competitions, like a mega event that was held at AUC that included 1,500 participants and speakers across the disciplines. In 2014, he became the founding host of the top popular science YouTube channel, El Dahih. It has over two and a half million views on YouTube. Please help me welcome Mr. Ahmed El Gandur to the stage. Hello. Hello. Uh, okay. Does everyone here understand Arabic? Because I'd probably prefer talking in Arabic. I get too much comfortable speaking in Arabic. So, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, it's not a good question to answer because I cannot see how many people raise their hands because of the lights. But, uh, Oops. How's it going? No, no, I'm just going to the screen. Did you the screen? Okay. 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 انت مين تقوم قايل لي انا وائل طاهر انت مين طب ما تقعد 
مش وائل يقعد ماشي الحقيقه ان انا انا اتشرفت جدا بالدعوه ان انا اكون موجود هنا ووعدت اقول ازاي ممكن اعمل توك عظيمه في هذا المكان اللي انا قعدت فيه اكتر من اربع سنين فبس قعدت افكر ايه اكتر حاجه ممكن تبقى انترستنج تجذب انتباه المشاهدين والحقيقه كنا انا بدرس بيولوجي علم احياء فانا عارف ايه الحاجه اللي كلنا على الاقل لو مش مهتمين بيها فاحنا المفروض نكون مهتمين بيها او انا مكسوف جدا من الكلمه اللي هجيبها لان اهلي موجودين هنا فهبقى محرج شويه بس ده يعني ايه علم شغاله ليه دايما الكمبيوتر مكسوف اه اجيبها اه اوكي ادينا نجيبها من هنا اه ماشي احنا ككائنات اهم حاجه على الاقل في علم الاحياء هو ان احنا نوصل جيناتنا للمرحله اللي بعدها احنا فعلا ما نفرقش ما نفرقش كنت بكلم لسه من حلقه قريبه انه ان بعض الجينات ممكن تدفع بعض الناس او بعض الكائنات ان هي تقتل نفسها مقابل ان هي توصل للجنس وبالتالي توصل جيناتها للمرحله الجايه فعلا الجينات انت ما تفرقش معاها في حاجه اهم حاجه الجينات تنتقل من جيل لجيل فانا قلت انسب حاجه ابتدي بيها لازم تبقى حاجه سكشوال I have to select something sexual. What is more sexual and exciting than the sexual? Ah, uh, oh, okay, مش. The theory of sexual selection. مش. النظرية دي ب النظرية دي ببساطة هي بتتكلم على استراتيجية الذكر والأنثى في عملية الميتينج. Okay. الفكرة إنه إحنا عندنا آه إنه هي هي ماشي هي بتمجر كل واحد عنده عنده ايه يقدر ينفستو في العلاقه ف... فمثلا لو جينا بصينا هنا أو... يا نهار اسود ايه ده ايه ده ايه ده ايه ده ايه ده ايه ده, إيه ده؟ ماشي سوري 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 انا حرقت في البرزنتيشن اسمع علينا ماشي فهو ال... الانثى لو جينا بصينا للاستثمار اللي بتعمله في اي علاقه هي بتعمل اكبر اكبر استثمار على مستوى الولاده هي اولا مواردها محدوده عندها تقريبا من 300 400 بويضه ف يعني في حياتها كلها لكن على عكس الفتاك الذكر عنده تقريبا 100 مليون خليه منويه في المره الواحده عظيم وزائد ان هي تقريبا بتدي تقريبا تسعة شهور ولاده فوزن بقى موجود وكائن موجود ومحتاجين رعايه خاصه وزائد ان المفروض تقريبا بتقعد المفروض اللي يحصل ان هي تبقى تقريبا سنتين رضاعه طبعا ده ما يحصلش بس اني وايز فاكبر انفستمنت بتحصل من عند الانثى الذكر هي البتاع ده اللي بيقلب لا لا خلاص تمام فبس وبعدين فا فالانفستمنت الاكبر بيبقى من عند الانثى الانفستمنت الاخف بيبقى من عند الذكر المهم ده طبعا دي دي اسمها الداروين بيتمان بارادايم آه هو طبعا في نقد لهذا الكلام ولكن خلينا نمشي بيها لان هي بتساعد في شرح حاجات كتير اه هو بياخد طبعا الدلع الجاهز هو اقل انفستمنت هو بيعملها ماشي اه اوكي ده بيخلي آه بيخلي كائنات كتير بيحط بيعمل حاجتين اولا بيخلي آه بعض الـ 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 بيخلي هناك عبء على الذكر بيخلي اه بيخلي الانثى في موضع اللي تشوز هي اللي بتختار لان هي عندها اكبر انفستمنت او عندها اكبر اكبر حاجه تخسرها مش محتاجه تضيع فرص لكن الذكر كده كده الانفستمنت بتاعته بتبقى رخيصه وسهله فما بقاش سيلكتف عشان كده حتى هنشوف الرجاله دايما في لازم في وضع المبهر لازم هو اللي يعمل الحركات اللي تبهر الانثى انا عايز اشغل فيديو اه اه دول اه اه ما جبهاش دول المهم الفيديو الموجود ده لكائنات لطيفه كده اسمها البارادايز بيردز وهم الطيور مونو بيسموهم مونوجامس يعني بيبقى ذكر وانثى بس يعني اه يعني علاقه كده ايه 
فيها اسمه ايه ده فزي ما انت شايف اهو ذكر عمال هنا بيحاول يبهر الانثى ابهار هو متحرش شويه ولكن ايه في عالم الطيور ده مقبول يعني عامل الوش العبيط ده وطبعا هناك الجابانيز بافر فيش فين الفيديو اللي بعد When even your best isn't good enough. في الاخر بعد هذا النط وال وهنا طبعا الجابانيز بافر فيش بتفضل تعمل لوحه كده فنيه جميله جدا لل للمحبوبه هنشوف كده بقى اللوحه بقى جايه من فوق بعد ما الراجل عمال يشتغل هو فين حاجه في النص هنا اه ماشي اللوحة عظيمة زي ما انتم شايفين كده اتس اتس ماستر بيس يعني ااا فبس فده بيبقى هناك بيخلق عبء على الذكر ان هو دايما ايه لازم يبقى في وقف الفيديو اه دايما لازم يبقى بيبهر الانثى واكشلي لما تيجي كان في احصائيات شيقة جدا موقع تندر لو حد يعرفه دايما الذكور 60% من البروفايلز اللي بيشوفوها بي اه بيعملوا سوايب رايت اللي هو بيعجبهم تمام لكن اناث 6% بس ف Females are very, very, very picky, and they have the most investment to put. فده من ناحية. الناحية الثانية هناك استراتيجيات بقى في التكاثر. دلوقتي الذكر بينتج في المرة الواحدة تقريبا 100 مليون خلايا منوية. فاشتر هو very rich ويقدر إيه يميت multiple times. لكن الأنثى عندها resources قليلة ووقت قليل لكده. فبس فكل واحد بيبقى عنده استراتيجية. استراتيجية في التكاثر. آه فدايما الستات بيبقى عندهم آه عاده يعني الماكسيمم اللي هيقدروا يعملوه هو الست دي كانت اكتر واحده جابت اولاد كان تقريبا 70 ولد على عكس احنا مثلا لو شفنا حد زي آه جنكيز خان هو عنده تقريبا من 1000 ل 2000 ابن لان هو تاني هو ما الذكر ما بيتحملش اي عبء فبس فدي بتبقى استراتيجيه ناجحه وعشان كده بنشوف آه في نسبه كبيره من المجتمعات فكره البوليجامي انه يبقى ذكر واحد مرتبط بكذا انثى طبعا ده ده الجنرال كيس هناك مجتمعات وهناك كائنات بيسموها بولياندري اللي هو انثى مرتبطه بكذا ذكر بنلاحظ بالاخص في في النحل دول ممكن عندهم مش عارف تعمل مش عارف 30 40 ميت ميتنج بس فبس بس الجنرال كيس ان هو الذكر بي بريفير البوليجامي هذه الاستراتيجيه الاحسن له بس فعل بوليجامي از سوليوشن ااا ماشي فانا هاخد بقى من هنا الموضوع البوليجامي وابدا في الحديث عن نفسي ااا الحقيقه انه انا كان عندي برضو مشكله مع فكره المونوجامي فكره ان انا ابقى مرتبط بحاجه واحده او يعني عندي كده ايه بس كده حاجه اكسكلوسيف ااا فده خلى عندي مشكله في ان انا الاقي حاجة واحدة كده إيه عجباني مادة واحدة أو ساينس واحد عجبني فبس فهو الموضوع بدأ إنه أنا كنت بشوف دوكيومنتري جميل جدا اسمه ذا أليجنت يونيفرس كان بيتكلم عن نظرية في الفيزياء اسمها سترينج ثيوري نظرية بيسموها الأوتار وهي كانت بتتنبأ إنه في 11 بعد للكون وأنا وجدت هذه الفكرة فكرة روشة جدا إحنا عندنا المفروض البعد فوق وتحت يمين شمال قدام ورا دول الثلاث ثري سبيشال دايمنشنز وعندنا البعد الرابع هو التايم فتخيل بقى يبقى فيه ستة كمان على بحر بعض النظريات أو أحيانا بتوصل لحاجة و20 في الإم ثيوري فدي وجدتها فكره انترستنج جدا ولكن انا ما كنتش كويس قوي في الرياضيات فحسيت ان انا مش هقدر اكمل مع الفيزياء وبالتالي احنا لازم نبريك اب. تاني حاجه كان كتاب عظيم لواحد اسمه سيد هارتا مخرجي هو حد حد بقى عمال كده يتنطط ما بين اوكسفورد وكولومبيا وهارفارد ميديكال سكول حد جامد جدا وكتاباته ممتعه هو كان بيتكلم على تاريخ مرض زي السرطان سوري موبايل بيري بيتكلم على تاريخ مرض زي السرطان وبس وده خلاني ايه ده انا عايز ادرس طب انا عايز اتخصص في حاجه ليها علاقه بالبيولوجي بعد كده قريت كتاب اسمه ذا فيسبوك افكت وده كان انترستنج جدا ناحيه انه عالم التقنيه ده وعالم البرمجه وعالم ان انت تعمل بقى ستارت ابس وشركات وتبقى عندك كذا تاثير بتاع فيسبوك الكتاب ده كان منشور تقريبا 2000 ورا مش لا مش 2004 على فيسبوك اه اه فبس الكتاب ده got me really excited about being an entrepreneur هو طبعا اكتشفت ان انا ماليش علاقه بهذا الموضوع انا بحب بس ادرس الموضوع بس ما ماليش ايه ده؟ شبه ميشيل فوكو 
انت ايه اللي جاب فوكو هنا بس وبعدين كان كتاب قبل ما اخش جامعه على طول كان كتاب بور ايكونومكس هو كان انترستنج جدا من ناحيه ان هو كان بيتعامل مع مشكله الفقر بشكل علمي نبص كده نشوف ايه المشاكل اللي تقدر ايه الحاجات اللي تقدر فعلا تحل مشاكل الفقر عملنا كذا حلقه حلقه المارشميلو كان انسبايرد طاهر هو اللي كاتبها كان انسبايرد باي الكتاب ده فبس فانا كان عندي كل هذه المجالات وبجدها انترستنج جدا ومش عارف اختار وبعد كده كان جه عندي انترست في في مجال اسمه السوشيال سايكولوجي كان في كورس على كورسيرا اسمه سوشيال سايكولوجي جامعه ويسليان وقريت كتاب بعده كده اسمه كوركولوجي كان بيتكلم عن الحاجات اللطيفه الظريفه في علم النفس بس وجدت ان انا مش عارف ارتبط بماده واحده مش عارف يبقى عندي علاقه مونوجامس مع ماده واحده وده كان عامل لي مشكله بس فبعد كده دخلت مسابقه اسمها فيم لاب وكان المسابقه المفروض تقدم فكره علميه في خلال ثلاث دقائق زي ما كانوا الدكاتره هنا بيعملوا وبس ولقيت ان انا في مجال موجود بره قنوات زي فيسوس وفيرتاسيوم بيقدموا افكار علميه اوف ذا انترست ممكن تبقى حاجات بعيده عن مجال اختصاصاتهم ويقدموها في قناه على اسمه ايه؟ هو ده كان فيديو لطيف بس ما اظنش احنا ايه نشغله يعني بس فا فبس قعدت اذاكر الناس بتعمل ايه على اليوتيوب كان وقتها في قنوات موجوده في مصر وكان في قنوات موجوده بره اتعلمت تكنيك اللي هو الجامب كاتس عشان تبقى الموضوع سريع وانا كده كده عندي قدراتي ضعيفه شويه في موضوع الحفظ ف... فبس فوجدت ان انا اقرا السكريبت وبعدين اطلع اقولها تاني اقرا السكريبت واطلع اقولها تاني وبعدين في الاخر اشيل كل حاجه وبعدين تبقى بالشكل اللطيف اللي هو ابقى واقف هنا مره وبعدين تلاقيني واقف هنا الناحيه الثانيه دي كانت فكره الجامب كاتس وبس بدات سنه 2014 شهر 8 وكنت متوقع بقى مشاهدات كثيره كنت انا تقريبا اول واحد يعمل ده في العالم العربي فقلت بقى خلاص ما يعني ايه الماركت عطشان وانا هاجي اسقيه بس وبعدين لقيت ان الموضوع ما كانش عامل فيديوهات كثيره قوي تقريبا اول فيديو مش عارف كان عامل 120 مشاهده ثلاث ارباعهم كانوا صحابي بس ات ات وان مومنت انا كنت المشهور وسطهم فده يعني ما ما ضربش في الايجو خلاني كده ايه مبسوط فضل هذا الموضوع مكمل تقريبا اول شهر كان عندنا 25 مشترك اول 90 يوم كان عندنا مش عارف 125 مشترك فضل هذا الموضوع شغال بهذا الشكل وابتدى بقى يبقى في ناس بتشير لي كان حسام غالي شاير فيديو بتاع جنرال في شهر واحد وده قلت الله ده فيديو جايب لايكات جديده كتير جدا انا للاسف كنت ضليع في كره القدم فكنت اعرف مين حسام غالي بس هو بيرنت هو حد مشهور ولابس فانيلا اه تقريبا لعيب كوره اكتشفت بقى ان هو حد جامد جدا في هذا المجال بس طبعا مجموعه من الاسئله طبعا كانت 2000 لايك آه بس فضل الموضوع شغال كده حتى تقريبا 2016 كان قناه وصلت عندي تقريبا 100000 مشترك وابتديت بقى ابتدى يحصل تواصل مع اي جي بلس وصورنا في شهر 3 وعرضنا في شهر 6 وفجاه بقى ايه الدنيا اتغيرت اه, آه احنا كنا اه, آه نزل البوستر بتاع اي جي بلس وده كان انترستنج جدا فهو انه خلاني اقدر اشتغل مع تيم بقى عندنا تيم كبير في تيم برودكشن وفي تيم بوست برودكشن ده على الاقل اول ست شهور بعد كده ابتدى يبقى عندنا تيم كتابه كبير بدايفرس انترست بقى في مثلا ناس مهتمه بالكوره فتبتدي تدرس انا انا شخصيا ماليش في الكوره ففي واحد دلوقتي بقى مهتم في الكوره ومهتم بالاطار الاجتماعي والاطار التاريخي اللي بتحصل فيه هذه الاحداث فكتبنا حلقات زي بقى ابو نيمار وميسي والكلب والتيكي تاكا والحاجات دي بقى في حد مهتم جدا جدا هو كان طبيب بيطري مهتم جدا بالحيوانات فعملنا حلقه زي الباندا وعملنا كيف بدا الكلب وبنعمل حلقات ثانيه ليها علاقه بالحيوانات فابتدى يبقى في هذا الدايفيرس اوف جيكس اللي موجود في فريق الكتابه عشان نقدر نعمل مواضيع مختلفه وبقى العمل مك... يعني انا كنت اول ما بادئ كنت انا بادئ كل حاجه لوحدي كنت انا بعمل الشوتنج والمونتاج والريسيرش وكل حاجه بس انا عارف ان هو جزء مهم ازاي هذا البرنامج بيشتغل او ازاي بنكتب الحلقه ازاي بنطلع فكره الحلقه هو اولا احنا بيبقى عندنا موضوع بنقعد نعمل ميتنج كده كل اسبوع نقعد نتكلم مع الشباب وكل واحد يقول لنا انا قريت في هذا الموضوع وجدته انترستنج جدا فمثلا كان عندنا كاتب اسمه عمر الجمال قرا كتاب اسمه ان ادبل حاجه كده عن ادب الهيستوري فيو مانيتي كان بيتكلم على تاريخ الاكل انا وجدت دي ده موضوع انترستنج جدا هنتكلم على تاريخ الاكل الناس هتحب هذا الموضوع ولكن احنا بنحب يبقى في كده تاتش بيسموه في عالم الاعلام والتلفزيون التريتمنت ازاي هنعالج هذا الموضوع ازاي بدل ما اطلع اقول اعزائي المشاهدين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله هنطلع النهارده نتكلم على تاريخ الاكل ونبدا نسد في هذه القصه ده هيبقى لطيف طبعا يعني بس احنا بنفكر ازاي نحط ده في اطار نكته فاهم ازاي يعني مثلا اللي عملناه في هذه الحلقه هو ان احنا تخيلنا بدانا بموقف ابن قاعد عمال بيذاكر وبعدين فجاه بيحس بالجوع 
طبعا بنبقى جعانين وقت المذاكره فيقوم رايح متسحب على المطبخ وبعدين يفضل ياكل فامه تقوم داخله عليه وتقفشه اه تقول له انت انسان مستهتر وعديم الدم وهمك على بطنك يقوم لها ايه 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 هم على بطني دي ايه المشكله ما هم على بطني ما التاريخ كله متعمل عشان الناس كان همها على بطنها ويبتدي بقى يذكر ازاي المجتمع الزراعي ده ما كانش حصل عشان احنا كان همنا على بطننا كان همنا ان احنا نفايند سكيور سورس اوف فود موجود دايما فابتدى يبقى في مدن ما كانش يبقى في مدن لو احنا ما كانش همنا على بطننا وابتدى وقام قايل لها طب ماشي انت عايزاني بقى اذاكر واشتغل عشان اسافر بره اروح اوروبا ولا امريكا طب امريكا دي هيكتشفوها ازاي من غير ما يكون همهم على بطنهم هم راحوا هناك ليه مش عشان يجيبوا البهارات من الهند اساسا هم رايحينها غلط فكان همهم على بطنهم في الاخر فابتدى الكتاب يستخدم في اطار ارجيومنت ارجيومنت عبيطه جدا ابني بيقولها له فده بيخلي الناس تتفاعل اكتر مع الفيديوهات وتبتدي بقى تاكل امها تشوفي اه انا باكل اهو عشان ايه عشان اغير في التاريخ او وات ايفر خلينا تجارب كتير مع حاجه زي كده كان عندنا حلقه اسمها المؤمن في المريخ ماشي انت عندك توبيك انتستنج جدا المريخ ولكن ممكن تطرحه في اطار تريتمنت معينه فتقوم قايل دلوقتي لو واحد دي انتو دي انا مسلمه وعايز يروح يصلي على المريخ يعمل ايه اه والله عشان يصلي على المريخ محتاج يتوضى فبالتالي محتاج ميه فنبتدي بقى هنا ده يبقى المدخل بتاعنا ناخده كده من ايده ونفهمه المريخ ده عليه ميه ولا لا ايه الرحلات اللي الناس عملتها عشان تلاقي ميه على المريخ ولا لا آه طب ماشي خلاص اتوضى الحمد لله عايز دلوقتي يصلي وبالتالي عايز قبله فعشان يقدر يظبط قبلته محتاج يبقى ظابطها مع الكوكب او واتس ايفر فالكوكب المريخ تقريبا بياخد سنتين عشان يلف فهيبقى صعب ان هو يبقى باصص ناحيه القبله طب ماشي عايز يصوم دلوقتي في مشكله مريخ زي ما قلنا بياخد سنتين تنين هو عنده قمرين هتحدد رمضان ازاي فهنا في اطار المشاهد يعني مايكل ستيفنز كان بيقولها بشكل حلو جدا اللي هو اي اي سوري انا بتكلم بسرعه فبتعب احس ان اخد نفس Uh, كان بيقول ان هو I, I teach I teach viewers so that by the time they discover they are learning it's already too late. <تصفيق> انا بدرس الناس بحيث ان هم لما يكتشفوا ان هم بيتعلموا خلاص الوقت اتاخر انت خلصت الفيديو. فبس فهو ده اللي احنا بنشتغل مع فريق الكتابه فيه ان احنا ازاي نقدر يبقى عندنا معلومات انترستنج جدا بس دايما نحطها في اطار تريتمنت في اطار ان انت هتخش تسمع النكته دي. بس وبعدين في الاخر في النص كده ايه احط لك شويه حاجات آه طبعا هي عمليه صعبه آه وهي دايما بنبقى عندنا مشكله في حته المصادر دايما بقعد اقول في المصادر ودايما الناس بتاخدها از از ان هو لا انزل اتاكد مصادر عشان ما بقولش اي كلام بس هو اكشلي انا كان بالنسبه لي دايما المشكله ان انا بسمع حاجه انترستنج جدا وعايز ادور على الموضوع اكتر اوت اوف كيوريوسيتي اكتر من ان هو اوت اوف لا لا الكلام ده اللي انت بتقوله ده مش موجود في المصادر والكلام ده غلط ف بس بس اللي هو احنا محظوظين جدا ان احنا في وقت آه الناس بره مش بس عندهم قدره في انتاج المعرفه هم كمان عندهم قدره في ارشفه المعرفه المعرفه اركايفنج نوليدج وكمان عندهم قدره في شعبنه المعرفه فيبقى في دكاتره مثلا زي براين جرين او ستيفن هوكينج دكاتره في جامعات كبار كولومبيا وكامبريدج ويكتبوا كتب للببليك يقدر يفهمها فاحنا بنروح لهذه هذا المحتوى اللي هو بيسموه بارا بوبيولار ساينس من الدكاتره دول وبس ودي بقى دي المصادر بتاعتنا متحمس قوي بقى استنى ما هو فين ماشي آه لحد دلوقتي احنا عملنا تقريبا 120 حلقه آه تعدد المشاهدات اكتر من 150 مليون مشاهده على اليوتيوب بس وتقريبا 100 مليون مشاهده على فيسبوك آه كنا لسه في شهر فبراير عملنا آه حلقه 40 دقيقه 40 دقيقة كانت الحلقة بمناسبة الحلقة المية للبرنامج الدحيح على اي جي بلس 40 دقيقة عاملة مشاهدات مليون و700 الف This is something I am very proud of and actually our team is very very proud of ل- 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 كان عادة دايما بيطر- بيتم طرح المحتوى العلمي في دايما في اطار ان هو ازاي ناخد العلم ده ونثبت حاجات في الدين زي مثلا دكتور مصطفى محمود which is which is interesting he was very revolutionary at the time بس اللي احنا عملناه جديد هو ان احنا اضفنا جانب كوميدي او جانب او جانب شعبوي يقدر يتم تناوله من غير ما يبقى فيه اي حاجه سيريس يعني فبس في النهارده 
انترستنج انف وي هاف وي هاد ا فيديو كان لسه نازل يوم الثلاث كان بيتكلم على حاجه تاريخ الذره واكتشاف من من هي اربع عناصر بس للجدول اسمه ده البريودكت تيبل للذره الكوركات اسمه ده الستاندرد موديل وده اتس اكشلي توب 12 ترندنج توب 12 ترندنج ان ايجيبت وحلقه الحرب العالميه الثانيه كانت ترندنج رقم ثلاثة، لا كان هتلر انا اسف، حلقة هتلر كانت ترندنج رقم ثلاثة، كان فوقينا فيديو لمحمد رمضان وفيديو لعمرو دياب. This is very interesting for for again again we're not we're not saying انه انه this is bad content. We're just saying this is type of content that wasn't really popular at the time. And thanks to our great team of production writers and researchers and post production, we are able to do that. And with the help of AJ Plus, of course. فا اه اوكي فده ال اه سوري اه فده زي ما انتم شايفين كده التيم بتاعنا العظيم هو في واحد بيفكر تحت والانتاج السخي جايب سوشي و... وبعدين ايه اه اه ماشي خلاص وبعدين في الاخر حابب ان انا اعمل انا ما بحبش قوي جو التوعيه او النصائح بحسسني يعني اه بس بجد ان هي فرصه لطيفه تكون ان احنا عندنا نسبه كبيره هنا طلبه جامعات ومدارس فبجدها فرصه انتستنج جدا او انا براها حاجه مهمه جدا يعني لانه في الوقت ده احنا فعلا عندنا وقت كبير جدا ان احنا نقدر نستكشف مجالات كتير ما عندناش فاينانشال بيردن ات ليست موست اوف اس سم اوف اس اوف كورس دو بس ات ليست A great majority of us don't, so we have a we have a luxury of time to discover what is around us. But when we discover, and finally, always one feels that he knows a little bit about himself. I know I like what I like. I know I understand what I understand. But I feel that finally, no. As I said earlier, you know nothing, John Snow. Not even about yourself. Which is interesting. So there's a chance, time at school, time at school, that we can discover and explore things that are different from us. من اللي عندنا وبس ودي بقى دي فرصه انه ايه آه نخش بشكل او باخر مع البوليجامي آه ويعني كون احنا آه في, في يعني ايه عشان بس ما يبقاش بوليجامي من ناحيه الذكور ولكن احنا عندنا ايضا في الدراما المصريه هناك ال ال تقريبا ايه ال عندنا الترم الثاني اسمه بولي امري اللي هو تبقى انثى مرتبطه بكذا زهره آه بكذا شخص وهي اسمه ايه ده بس ف وبس كده شكرا حابب ان انا بس انفايت هو في حد فين التيم ال تيم الكتابه ما لحقوش يجوا ولا ايه؟ مش متابع طاهر انت؟ ماشي اوكي بس شكرا جدا. انا اسف كنت سيء لا لا انا انا اسف I have a chance to Ask Ahmed any question you like. You may ask it on the app if you've downloaded the RCC app. If you haven't, you can still do that by going to AUC conferences. On the RCC app, you can pose your question and it will show up on the screen. Uh, we'll also take questions from the floor. So, any questions for Ahmed? Hi, Ahmed. Zakhna. <laughs> Um, I, I wanted to ask you, is it Arabic or English? Brahtk. Okay, the two in the same way. Is how do you go through a creative block? A creative, a creative block? Yes, or burnout. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think we're very lucky. We have a writing team, a wonderful writing team. So uh, if someone is having uh, a writer's block, we have others who can definitely contribute. And the fact that we do it on a more social level, uh, I don't think we have actually gone through a. Ida, <laughs> Ida. انت كنت ايه مش شايفه هل انت بتشحن تذاكر كتب دي وتعرضها الحلقات لو بتلخص تعمل سكاننج كتب تعمل كده ازاي زي ان شاء الله الاحدث ايه اوكي مش انا مش فاهم الحقيقه السؤال انا مش شايف حاجه ايه كان في قطه اوكي مش افتكرت في سؤال لطيف مش. احنا عندنا الحلقه الجايه انترستنج انف بخششكم هي اكشلي عن القطط وات ان ايرون ماشي فهي اه ف يوجوالي وي دونت هاف ذات وير لاكي نوت تو هاف ات از ماتش بيكوز وي هاف ا جود رايتنج تيم اند وي دو سو ماتش فان ستاف 
uh, together. Uh, but we, we did not have it yet, at least. Maybe we'll have it at one point. Thank you. Outside of, I love the safar very much. Ah, but uh, yeah, I'd be very happy, of course. So, we're now going to do two episodes in a week, so we're not busy. But if I have the chance to travel, I'll try. But uh, so, uh, by the way, Tahir is the writer of uh, Hitler and Marshmallow and the Second World War. And he was. Thank you. طاهر كان رئيس اتحاد الطلبه سنه 2012 سنه اللي انا كنت لسه عيل صغير بقى داخل فيها الجامعه و ثانك يو فيري ماتش احمد اي نو لونج تايم اجو يو ورنت انترستد ات اول ان سوشيال ساينسز كان يو بليز تيل اس وات ميد يو انترستد ان ان سمثينج لايك سايكولوجي فور اكزامبل هو الحقيقه انا لما فتره ثانوي كنت انترستد بس في ناتشرال ساينسز وكنت مؤمن ان هو اه هي دي دي ده الليفل اوف امبيريسيزم احنا عايزين نوصل للمش عارف لل12 ديسيمال بليس فا اي بيليف سو ماتش ان فيزكس ات از بايولوجي واز اوكي ات واز ماي ميجر اكشلي بس ات واز اوكي از لونج از اتس ناتشرال ساينسز كاريد ان ذا ساينس اند انجينيرنج سكول بس وبعدين حصل بقى الايه ان انا كان في واحده كان في واحده معجب بيها وهي كانت سايكولوجي كانت عامله حاجه كده في الاي جي كان عامله سكور وكده ومش عارف ايه وكانت تسال اسئله ذكيه وفجاه كده ابتديت اتقبل موضوع السايكولوجي ده وانظر له كانه يعني علم وهما بيدرسوا حاجات مهمه وكده وبس وابتديت احب هذا المجال واكشلي انا انا اول فيديوهاتي لم تكن على حاجه ليها علاقه بعلوم الاحياء او الفيزكس ون اوف ذا موست بوبيلر ون اوف ذا فيزكس ابيسودز بس بس طبعا علم النفس بقى هو اللي ممكن يشرح ليه فجأة ما كنتش بحب علم النفس وفجأة حبيت علم النفس بس فانت سي ابيرنتلي اتس اتس ا جود ديل شكرا يا طاهر اني ذا ذيرز ا كويشن ذير ان ذا ثيرد رو مساء الخير مساء النور uh, اول شيء انا من سوريا اهلا هلا 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 يا جماعه بقول لكم ايه في فيلم جامد جدا يوم 13 في زاويه آه اسمه ستيل ريكوردنج بس افتكرت اه بس هو فيلم عن ال اه كمل آه ما في سؤال الحقيقه ما في سؤال محدد بس آه حبيت انه انت تعرف انه انت مشهور صرت بالوطن العربي يعني مو بس بمصر يعني انا من وقت اللي كنت بسوريا انا بتابع الدحيح اها الله يخليك انت شرفتني جدا شكرا جدا ف إذا ممكن اسأل سؤال فهو إنه أنت قديش فخور بنفسك ولوين حابب توصل؟ عفوا؟ آه إيه؟ قد إيه أنت فخور بنفسك؟ اه وحابب توصل لفين؟ آه والله هو أنا حاليا مبسوط جدا جدا في هذا الإطار اللي إحنا شغالين فيه، ناحية آه إحنا عندنا فعلا تيم جميل جدا، سبورتيف جدا، كريتيف جدا، آه فأنا سو فار مبسوط، ممكن يبقى في فعلا بروجيكتس تانية، أنا بفكر في حاجات تانية، آه بس لسه لن يتم الإعلان عنها دلوقتي. بس بس طبعا اه بنفكر ان احنا نقدر يعني خد ان احنا بيبقى عندنا ناس كتيره تعرف تعمل هذا الموضوع وبالتالي تقدر تترانسفير هذا النولج فنقدر فعلا نعمل بروجكتس اكبر بس بس حاليا انا مبسوط جدا بهذا الشكل ومبسوط جدا تاني a lot of people think what we do is you know out of ان احنا عندنا قضيه واحنا يعني بنحاول نعلم الناس عشان هم ما يعرفوش بس هو this can be This can be part of our goals, but so the goal is that we do this for our pleasure. We love this. We love reading about stuff and telling it to people as a team. Hey, Ahmed, I want to ask you. I'm a child addicted to your show. And I'm always afraid of my mom and dad. We have to sit and watch. Shatreen. Ah, have you? أنا عايز أعرف إيه يعني حسيت بالإمباكت بتاع الشو بتاعك هل حد من الشباب اتصل بيك وقال لك أنا بسبب الحلقة المعينة صرت ميجر أو عملت حاجة أو بروسيدد ويز ذا ريسيرش في حاجة واتس ذا إمباكت أوف يور شو أون ذا نيو أو يانج جنريشنز فأظن حد أولادي موجودين هنا برضه بجد أه أحلى تحية للأولاد اللي بتشجع أهاليها دي 
طبعا اه ديفنتلي في ذير ار لوت اوف انسبايرنج ستوريز كان في قصص كتير ناس uh, uh, يعني لقوا ان هو في حاجه ما كانش يعرف عنها حاجه وبعدين دلوقتي بعد ما شافها وشاف طريقه عرضها وشاف المصادر تاني احنا وي دو نوت سبستيتيوت اكاديميا اور 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 or uh, يعني we do not we are not education يعني we're not really education as much as we are basically journalistic احنا بنتناول حاجات احنا انت فيها وبعدين نحاول ننقلها للعامه و sometimes this can inspire people to study things in academia uh, بس definitely اه في قصص كتير حاليا مش حاضر حاجه في دماغي يعني بس uh, بس في اه oh, definitely ناس uh, ناس كتير هو ده فعلا اتمنى ان هو فعلا الناس تكتشف انه في مجالات كتيره بره الحاجات اللي احنا دايما عارفينها ودايما حافظينها uh, بس فانا اتمنى ان هو ده اللي يكون بيحصل بس Uh, uh, professors, amazing professors like you, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no that, that's really true. The uh, style, the teaching, was. I mean, I was taking from a doctor, a famous name, Eric Lander from MIT. Uh, he teach. He was. He was actually a mathematician. Then he. Uh, then he got into biology, and he's now leading the Broad Institute. Where he is currently a very famous guy, because he's currently leading the patent of uh, CRISPR. So, but he's very famous. He's always talking. بيحكي القصه العلميه في اطار تاريخي واطار اجتماعي ما بيجيبش مندل ده كحد فجاه كده قرر يدور في اسمه ايه ده البيز ويكتشف لا لا هو حط في اطار اجتماعي حصل فخلاه بشكل او باخر يروح لحاجه كده وهو يعني هو كان بيضيف جانب انساني وجانب اجتماعي للبحث العلمي ان هو البحث العلمي زي ما قلت مش حاجه كده فكرت فيها وعملتها انه كان في حاجه كان في حاجه اكبر من كده بتحصل وكان في هيستوريكال تراجيكتوري رايح لهذا الموضوع طبعا ده مش مش شرط يكون موجود بس بس اتس انترستنج تو ليرن اباوت ات واتس انترستنج تو تيل بيبل اباوت ات وين يو هاف ات ان ستوري وي ريلي لايك ستوريز ماتش مور ذان ستاتستكس ويتش از انفورتشنت بس ذاتس هاو ثينجز ورك انفورتشنتلي اي ثينك وي هاف تايم فور وان مور كويستشن وان مور كويستشن اني بادي Oh, oh, the here, the... Uh, now you said uh, everybody should discover himself because we don't really know ourselves, okay? So how exactly do you recommend somebody would know deeper about himself, his basis, and so on? Because it's so scary to know oneself so late. De What do you recommend about this? Uh, oh, definitely, the 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 الحاجات دي بس هو فعلا يعني أنا بحس فعلا كتب مصدر interesting جدا لأن هو بيسيبك فترة إن أنت تفكر شويه في الكلام اللي انت اللي دخلك فبجد القرايه فعلا حاجه عظيمه وبس وخليك اوبن تو ذا كايند اوف كويستشنز يو هاف ليترلي ذا ذا الخانات اللي بنحط فيها انه ده بيولوجي او ده فيزياء او ده تاريخ او ده ايا كان هو هو في الاخر هو انت بيبقى عندك سؤال معين في حاجه بتمسك بشكل او باخر وبالتالي بتبحث فيها يعني وي دونت هاف تو جو ثرو ذا ايدياز اوف دريدا اند دي كونستراكت لانجويج اند دو اول اوف ذات بس But again, we have we are interested in things and we just find out about them. But so definitely, reading is is an option. Uh, watching uh, uh, a lot of different stuff and new stuff is is also an, an option. Listening to people who speak and enjoying the for people at AUC or or, or other institutions, you have the luxury of you know. I, I, this actually inspired me very much. So, تقريبا كل كل يوم. في الجامعه هنا بيبقى في مثلا اللي هي من واحده لاثنين بيبقى اسمها بيسموها اسامبلي اور وبعدين بيبقى في ديبارتمنت معينه جايبه سبيكر معين وهو بيتكلم. تو مي ذس واز فيري انسبايرنج سو اكتر حلقه عملتها وتشافت كانت حلقه اسمها اسمها ايه عمتك؟ اقتصاد عمتك كانت بتتكلم على التاريخ الاقتصادي لمصر وده كان عشان اكشواريال ساينس كلوب كان جايب حد اسمه عمر الشنيتي وهو كان بيحكي تاريخ مصر ويعني و... ايه ق... صندوق القرض صندوق قد صدق بس وكان بيشرح ازمه الدولار وكده واي جت فيري انسبايرد باي ذا توك كتبت رجعت كتبت حلقه خدت اسمه ده موافقته واذا كان المحتوى صح وتمام وقدمتها والحلقه تقريبا عامله 4 مليون مشاهده ام نوت سينج ذير هاز تو بي ا براكتيكال يوز اوف وات ايفر يو هير بس ديفينتلي هيرينج ا لوت از از فيري يا انسبريشن اند We'll take one more question from Dr. Mohi, and the rest of you, if you have questions, you can continue to write them on the app, and uh, Ahmed will answer them over the next several months, probably. Okay. And also, uh, we don't want anybody to leave until the end of the ceremony today. Ahmed will be here, so of course, uh, when the ceremony is completely finished and he's out in front, you can all mob him and ask him whatever you want. Okay, Dr. Mohi. Okay, Randur. Over here on the right. Here, 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 here. 
طبعا انا اول مره اشوفك او اول مره اعرف الاسم وطبعا انترستنج فور مي يور اكت وانت بتقدم حاجه جديده اعتقد انها ممكن يبقى ليها مستقبل كويس انا عايز اعرف اختيارك الاسم الدحيح ايه ليه اخترت هذا الاسم هل هذا ليه علاقه بدراسات ولا مجرد اسم كده ليه تاريخ عندك هو اسم في البوبيلر كلتشر يعني حد بيذاكر كتير وهو بجده في سنة كده لطافة وفي سنة يعني ايه التريقة وسخرية هو نوعا ما بيعكس انا عايز اوصل بايه من المحتوى بتاعي فانا اكشلي يعني I did not really think a lot about the name هو انا حسيت انه ممكن بقى اسمه الدحيح بس وحطيتها كده بس اه ما كانش ما كانش عندي جراند ناراتيف اوف واي اي اكشلي تشوز ذا نيم انستيد اوف اذر نيمز كنت بفكر في الموس بس حسيت انه عنيف شويه فا اه فيستحسن يبقى حاجه ليها علاقه بالدحيح وتبقى فاين ثانك يو شكرا ليتس اول جيف احمد غندور ون مور هاند ون مور اي ونت تو انفايت ثانك يو احمد اي دونت افهم Uh, yeah, I would. Yes, oh, Just I'd like a... to invite some of the amazing writers who write for the show, who managed to come, and uh, the, um, our, our beautiful uh, line producer. Would you please come to stage and let's uh, take a picture? Yeah, that was. Fin, Osama, and Shahab. Fin, Osama. Fin, Osama. Fin. Fish Osama. داخل عالجامعة. بجد والله. Okay. So thank you, thank you all for coming. Uh, I, I know a lot, a lot يعني, there are definitely some people who came from uh, other places outside of Tagamo. Thank you all for coming and uh, sharing this experience. And I'm sorry if I wasn't, because I get a bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a for the whole team. For the whole team. وشكرا جدا لاي يو سي ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور ذا انفيتيشن اند ثانك يو اول ثانك يو ثانك يو ثانك يو فيري ماتش اند ناو وي لايك تو انفايت تو ذا ستيج فور كلوزنج ريماركس فور ذيس يرز ريسيرش اند كرياتيفيتي كونفنشن اور بريزيدنت فرانسيس ريتشاردوني What a, what a wonderful climax to an amazing week at AUC and in Egypt. When uh, Ahmed Gandour was explaining about uh, work and life, um, I feel very much the same way. I'm, I feel really privileged to be doing, not work, not a job, but to do something that delights me all the time. Being here at uh, AUC and Egypt in this time and in this place is just something that delights me. It's, it's a labor of love. And this week, and this event culminating this week really illustrates it. So part of my work, part of my responsibility is to uh, bring the world back to Egypt and back to AUC as one of the focal points of the world. And I explain to people that it, Egypt is not merely safe and stable and warm and welcoming as ever. It's not merely a place where the glories of the past are there to, to be marveled at, but it's the fountainhead of creativity in this part of the world. It's just a volcano of it. And we just saw a performance of uh, Ahmed al Ghandur uh, now, and we've seen this past week of the Eureka Conference just what, a, what an epicenter of creativity AUC is and Egypt is. I'd like to congratulate Uh, Associate Provost Ala Adris, I'd like to congratulate Dean Ghada Ashimi, I'd like to congratulate all the participants in the amazing events that I've witnessed this week from the start when we had one of the great Egyptian scientists, Mohamed Ghonim, right here at AUC, and the, the movie we, uh, the documentary we produced on higher education. Through all the events of the week, the pitches I saw earlier in the week by the uh, amazing faculty members, Uh, recapitulated today with the finalists, the architecture students whose shows I saw the other evening, amazing shows, and then 
all else, even beyond the Eureka Conference that we do every year. A week ago today, uh, we uh, capped at the uh, new administrative capital. We had done two days before that a conference bringing Chinese and African representatives of their great universities to Egypt to our campus. And then last week they went to the new administrative capital for a global conference on creativity and research and higher education. We brought the Africans and the Chinese here to the American University in Cairo. We had at the same time that was going on out there, Norman Froster and three other world-class prize-winning architects to come to Egypt, to AUC, in a conference sponsored by the Lafarge Company, uh, to look at problems of design, architecture, and, uh, uh, and, and Egypt, again, as the epicenter of all of that. The Astronomy Club uh, the other night. On and on and on. In any given week in this university, in this country, we see artistic expression, uh, research that is going on. We just had a tiny taste of the research and, and creativity of this great university here this afternoon, and there's, there's more yet to come. So I want to congratulate all the participants. Um, thank you for showing, for demonstrating, for reassuring people, for reassuring Egyptians and those outside that this country has the seeds of greatness, not just because of its past, but for what its young people its researchers, its professors, its scientists, its artists are producing for tomorrow. That's the reason to come back to Egypt if, you're, if you don't know this country, if you're outside. That's the reason to use all the tools that this country has to offer, the great brains of this country, and build a wonderful future. Congratulations once again to all of those who participated in the Eureka Conference. I think it's been extraordinary. The fourth year, and at least the fourth year, right? And, it, uh, and I think it, it must be the greatest uh, ever. I have this cool app. I'm learning a lot about how to use it, and I've participated in it uh, through using this as well. Thank you very much. Mabruk, and uh, have a great rest of the program. And we have another yes. presentation to make. Thank you, President Ricciardoni. And we'd like to, <laughs> we'd like to invite Ahmed Gandur back to the stage, because we'd like to give him a token of our appreciation now. I don't know if you can see them at this distance. I'm going to explain what they are. They're actually pretty special. We're 100 years old, or 100 years young, because we're looking forward to our next 100 years. You're part of it. And so we have a centennial coin, silver coin, and a gift I'm especially proud of that a group of people put together here, our artists and our researchers, a centennial edition of uh, the book that celebrates Egypt's great uh, revolution that occurred one month after we were founded, the Zavul Re Revolution, with Sayyid Darwish's music, which we researched, annotated, performed, and it's all here in a, in a centennial edition for you. Now I'd like to invite Dr. Nelly Elnani and Dr. Rami Ali to the stage to present the awards for the Author's Challenge. All right. Hello. Thank you, Mike. I'm Nelly Elinani. I'm an assistant professor of organizational behavior in the School of Business, and I am the co-lead on the Authors Challenge. The Authors Challenge is a provost initiative that has taken place over 2018-19, so this academic year. The aim of it is to engage undergraduate students at AUC in multimodal forms of writing. So not just your typical boring essay writing. We wanted to get students excited in writing. 
So Romy uh, and I, my co-lead, we developed five categories. These were also based on feedback from students across AUC, and these included podcasting, script writing, short story, spoken word, graphic novel in total. And for across our initiative, we had 185 students that applied for all of these categories. And the winners will actually be sponsored by the Provost Initiative to go on a writing-related program abroad. In fact, we're a little bit jealous because they're going on exciting programs in America and Europe and all over to get amazing at writing and come back as student ambassadors for the Authors Challenge next year. Central to the success of the Authors Challenge were a series of workshops that took place over the fall and spring semester. And these were actually all designed and delivered by key faculty who are experts in the area relating to each category and from practitioners, not only from in Egypt, but from across the world. So this is a little bit about the Authors Challenge. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Professor Rami Ali. He's an assistant professor of anthropology and he is also the co-lead on the Authors Challenge and also has become a very dear friend. Hi, everyone. Right, I have, first of all, a long list of people who we need to thank. So as Nelly said, we have to thank 180 students who signed up to the program. We have to thank 72, 72 students who eventually made it to the first round of workshops and 35 students who stayed on board for 20 workshops, four workshops per category over six months, right? So they put in an enormous amount of work. There was all of this drafting and redrafting. And after the students, we have to thank Farida Mustafa, who's our coordinator. She's a former AUC student. Suhail Al-Fakahani, who is our videographer. Nancy Georgi, we need to thank our faculty. None of this would have been possible without AUC faculty. We have to thank uh, Doris Jones, Iman Hammam, Gillian Campana, Nina Shabrawi, Mahmoud Shaltout, thank you Mahmoud, Yusuf Raghib, Kim Fox, Mahmoud al Lozi, Noor Ibrahim, Noor Naga, Yusuf Racha, Heidi Zakaria, Omar Hossam, and loads of people from support services here at AUC like Ghada Sheba, May Rajdan, Tariq Maghrabi, and of course we have to thank our provost, who sponsored this from the outset, we have to thank Amani Shimi, Ghada Shimi, Rob Switzer, Aziza Lozi, and Kathy O'Neill. All of these people made this possible, and the students will have an amazing, not only an amazing experience in writing and learning how to write beyond the essay, but also in traveling and coming back and being writing ambassadors for AUC. Now, what we're going to do now is that we have five winners from five different categories, and they will, we will present some of their work for you before announcing the winners of each five categories. Just in case you're not sure what the big fuss is about, each winner gets to go to a writing-related retreat of their choice. Well, we have had to vet where they're going, but relatively speaking, of their choice somewhere around the world, and they will, of course, document what they have done and come back and feed it to us. So this is about opportunities that are related to academic excellence, writing, and expression. So the first person I'd like to call up is Mariam Al-Bayadi, who uh, took part in the short stories category. Hi. <laughs> uh, okay, everyone bear with me. This is uh, my first time talking to so many people, and this is, ex this is extremely overwhelming, I have to say. Uh, so, first of all, like, um, I'd like to thank everyone. This is my first time giving a speech. <laughs> so, um, I'd like to thank everyone for this opportunity, and it's, it's been great. It's been very beneficial, and... Um, I came out of the Authors Challenge with my first ever finished work, my first ever complete work, and uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to share with you an excerpt. Yes, please. Uh, <laughs> so I wrote a short story titled The Weight of Disaster and Light Hearts, and I'd like to share with you a tiny excerpt of a scene where characters are just generally struggling with uh, a fear of heights, basically. <laughs> 
so here we go. Okay. I'm not going up there. He turned away from me and tilted his chin up towards the sky. I was already honest with Adam, but he made his decision. Have you ever tried? I asked him. Have you ever been up somewhere? No, never. Not at this age. I twisted my body fully to one side. I was facing him now. I mean, when you were younger. Ever been somewhere so high up that the cars looked like tiny dots? He clenched his eyes, not in an effort to remember, but in an effort to expel all that he did. I was over this. I was, he said after a pause. When I was in my 20s, I went up to the tower with my wife. We were engaged at the time. I was afraid, but I forced myself because I wanted to impress her. I smiled. Then what happened? I grew old and weak and very afraid. I fumbled with my hands, only this time they were dry. I was standing on the balcony when it happened, the earthquake. I was hanging things up on the clothesline, and I felt it. I heard the ground crack, and I ran back inside. Seconds later, the whole thing just collapsed. Well, good thing you live on the first floor, I told him, noticing that he had gripped the door handle. He looked straight ahead of him, eyes focused, tongue poking out occasionally, feeling the air's temperature. I called the elevator down and waited. My uncle's forehead resembled a glazed donut. I thought that he and my father both must have suffered from a severe poor problem. He wiped the sweat off his forehead as the light peeked through the glass window and the elevator came to a stop. I let him go in first. He tugged at the fatty skin of his neck and averted his gaze to the red digits overhead. His lips were slightly parted and his eyes resembled black beads and he breathed shallowly like he was drowning. I pressed the button and let the door close on us. My uncle fumbled with his hands. I realized he had retired from work because he couldn't go up past the first floor. I realized that our tower and the Eiffel Tower and the sky deck were all on good terms with the sky and that the only way to get to them was to fly. I realized that my uncle may never visit another country again. I felt the elevator go up like a rocket. My hands became cold for reasons that I could not understand. Perhaps it was him or me or the earthquake or some kind of peculiar predisposition. We breathed, shallow and deep, filling the cubicle with what felt like steam darting through the blackness of the well, being hoisted up, countered by heavy weights, the whir of the motors, rusty cables, a sophisticated algorithm deciding where we would end up, the walls closing in, the walls closing in. I glanced at my uncle through the corner of my eye. He squeezed his car keys in his hand, the digits, 13, 14. His grip loosened, the elevator braked and my lungs bedded down in my chest. We expelled air, we relieved the tiny room from our weight, a meaty smell traveled up my nostrils and made my stomach grow. Perhaps you would speak of this moment again. Thank you. Can we have um, Kendal Marakbi, please? Okay, Rami. This should show you. Kendal's part of the graphic novel section. How are you? Full screen, So while we're waiting for this to open, if you can just maybe think about what types of writing you like and maybe give us some feedback on what new categories we should have next year. We're thinking about stand-up comedy, but we'd like maybe a bit of feedback from the audience. Just uh, while we're pulling this up. Everything is falling because I'm on stage. Um, uh, no pressure, but uh, this is my first time also talking in front of a huge crowd. Um, about my experience, so actually art was a big part of my life since I was younger, but since coming to AUC, it's been like under a bit of like pressure, keeping up with academics and like actually drawing. And I was mainly interested in like making comics, like manga and anime, and because it's, it was part, it was what inspired me to do uh, more work. 
So when I first like actually came to the first uh, session, I was like, ah, Shuhaida, ما عندي أي opportunity to actually يعني, uh, be in this competition because I lack skill. But uh, through uh, the sessions and through uh, what, uh, thanks to the Dr. Shaltut and Dr. Yusuf uh, instructions, I had so much fun working through this and like uh, producing something and maybe regaining some of my passion uh, towards art. So I'm not going to bore you anymore. Let me check some of the story. I don't even know how to spell that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so, every artist <laughs> hates their own work, so I'm not like really. <laughs> I don't, don't want to like show it to like a huge crowd because I never did so before. But while I'm gonna scroll through it, I'll just tell you like the idea behind it and like some of the uh, sections. Um, do you scroll like this? Oh, okay, okay. Operator computer. Um, okay, so the main inspiration was basically from like two, two goddess uh, gods of ancient Syria because. I'm Syrian as well, and we we wanted to tackle like in a comedic way the idea of war between old goddesses, gods and goddesses, and the war that's happening uh, now. Uh, and the main thing is to make it funny and com uh, comedic to play on the idea of how war is basically like destruction and how we are not very um, different than the old legends of the gods who were destroying everything and just fighting for titles and like roaming around just like for fun. And th that was like basically it when I was like sketching this, uh, this story. You can see it on the, uh, there. And I think that's that's like basically the idea. Uh, and I really wanted to just like uh, focus on this because mainly when I'm someone when I mentioned like I'm from Syria, everyone was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, is everything okay? How is Syria now?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, there are good things and there are bad things. So I'm like, I don't want to remember the bad things ever since I came here. I, I want to remember the good things and like there are things that are okay. And I think that's what I mainly want to go through with this." <laughs> And I think that's like the end section of uh, the story. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity, actually, and thank you for everyone who contributed to this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Farida Gohar from the pod, uh, from, sorry from the spoken word category. Okay. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yeah, you can. Uh, okay. Uh, it's me, Farida. Um, we're supposed to talk about the office challenge. So, um, okay. <laughs> Let me recollect myself. Um, okay, but Amatan, I. Okay. It's, this is like only my second semester for, for Gamma. And last semester I was walking around and I just found spoken word on this big banner and I was just like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is always what I did. I was, I was very attracted to the opportunity to begin with. And then, um, yani, this is gonna sound very cheesy, but so I went into these workshops. I don't know what to expect. I knew Heidi, she was giving the workshops. I already, I'd already known her in uh, the word project. And it was very nice because Igama is so big. There are so many co different communities and you're just like, I don't know who I am. Okay, that's intense. Uh, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I do. If, uh, it was very interesting for me to go into these workshops. We were all like mentally, يعني, mental deterioration. We're not happy with our lives. <laughs> we all have traumas and whatnot. But it was just like we were sitting there and it was like group therapy kind of thing. But in, like that in itself was very therapeutic. Uh, and then, but I think the one thing I really did learn is, I think, and even like the, the girls that came before me, they have amazing work. But they were all before ma, before ma, they'd show you their work, they'd be like, uh, I'm not very sure about what I do, I don't like my own work, okay? And this is something I do kind of before I perform. I'd be like, guys, if this sucks, I'm sorry. And I think it's because Ahmata, and especially if it's art, we really question the legitimacy of what we produce. We question, we question the legitimacy of our feelings, okay? 
And I really think what like the author's challenge taught me, what Heidi taught me, is in Hoa, yani, my work does have value. And then I'll it. Okay, I'm gonna start performing because I'm the guy. Before that, I need to thank my mother. She's not here, but she told me I have to thank her. So, mommy, I love you. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry. Uh, this poem is called um, "On Womanhood and Hallucinogens." If my life was to be documented into a series of episodes, I'd make a lot of money. Not enough money to be happy, but enough to bring about the illusion that I am. Because you know what's better than happy money? Tear-stained money. Money that is not yours, but that which you pretend to be. Money that knows what it feels like to hit rock bottom, left in your pocket for long enough to know that your sweat smells like shame. Cue the theme song, episode one. I tell my mother the faucet is broken, my skin scabbed, my hair follicles weak. I tell her I broke the toilet seat, punctured the shower head, laid eggs in the bathtub, called up a stranger, let them know my neighbor's dog is in labor. The faucet is broken, I tell her. It only spews heat. She pretends to understand me, tells me to move on though my food is getting cold. Episode two, I do not move on. Instead, I bathe in the water of a leaking air conditioner and chant to the stars asking them to bless me. I kiss the grass goodnight and watch it as it falls asleep. I do not know how grass can fall asleep, but trust me, that night it did. And it snored so loudly it reminded the mosquitoes to bite me. My red blood cells to divide more rapidly. My womb, still empty, weeps for the love it has not received. Episode 3. The devil has just gone to bed and I am now left in my own company. While I, a retired existentialist, thought I had found my recluse in small spaces carefully crafted for my endless limbs, have instead discovered the malleability of despair. How it eases into small crevices, hooks itself onto my heartstrings, hikes up my rib bones and settles. The devil has just gone to bed, and yet still, the sadness has not ceased. Episode 4. My thighs are unforgiving, and so is my femininity. I did not have to read the news today to figure out that my existence is an epidemic. My womanhood, a handicap, a sip with my left hand, a sin. Me, adulteress, an attention hoarder, asking for it. She emptied herself in the bathroom, colonized the bedroom, taped flagpoles onto bedposts and saluted stained sheets, a mattress for a lover. She draped curtains around her chest and called it fashion. I, so good at doing a man's work, do not need a patriarchal society. My skin is already here and it oppresses me. Episode five, only 17 years in, but it is already the season finale. Go pour champagne on the carcasses of the deceased. Leave them to marinate and come celebrate me. We'll dance to stagnant white noise, the soundtrack of our misery, knowing that happy endings are merely a matter of turning the camera off conveniently. That the curtains might close, but we are destined to remain behind them suffocating. Thank you. Farida Gohar, thank you. One to watch. Nada Nagib, podcasting. Hello, everyone. Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, and I think I already forgot what I wanted to say. Um, my name is Nada Mustafa, and my podcast is narrative nonfiction about uh, the tradition of weddings in Egypt and abroad. Uh, and so who likes weddings? Who likes going to weddings, reading about weddings? I can't see the lights. I can't see anyone, but I hope you have your hands up. Anyway, my podcast talks about how it's not that glamorous, actually. And so we're going to talk about how the traditions of weddings might be the reason why weddings are so expensive. Oh. We came to the same landing spot with Sora and Kelly, as we did with Charlotte and Mustafa. 
landing spot with Sora and Karim as we did with Charlotte and Mustafa. Both are on the same page and both are happy, which is a relief considering this podcast would have made things pretty awkward had anything gone wrong. Things do often go wrong though. According to the wedding website The Knot, finances make up several of the main reasons couples fight before their wedding. Think about it for just a second and you'll be able to name at least one couple you personally know who broke up because they couldn't agree on how to spend on the wedding. After all, the prices are pretty insane. But in the end, it is a dress, and I'm sure you could find a similar dress if it weren't for a wedding for a much lower price. That is my idea. I think they know it's a one-time event. They know it's a big deal for women, and they, they exploit it. Charlotte is aware of the exploitation, but she and Mustafa are spending the money anyway. Why? Mustafa is pretty spot on with his guess. The, the whole thing is market, ah, it's a one-day party, it's life. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience, it's a day to remember and all that. And they play all that. And then this manifests itself in everything, the cost for the dress, for the venue, for the flowers, for the photographer. In the wedding industry, marketing is an essential and brutal part of the experience. Our wedding carnival season 2. Akbar ma'arad zafaf yadumma akthar min tisayna arad. Jewelry, furniture, wedding... Like this advertisement for a wedding carnival promoting everything from furniture to jewelry to wedding planners to, of course, dresses. In her book, Brides Incorporated, Vicky Howard explains how the supposed tradition of weddings has been commercialized. She calls it the business of tradition. You need to have a traditional white dress, the traditional bouquet, and your traditional long guest list. And every single one of these traditions has a pretty hefty price tag attached to it. Okay. Um, we only got a chance to listen to a little part of it, but I definitely encourage you to go listen to the entire thing when you have the time. And I just want to say that uh, the Daughters Challenge was a great experience and it's a wonderful opportunity that I hope to make the best out of. And I have to thank my professor, Kim Fox, who's not here, but she helps me immensely creating this. And uh, of course, I have to thank my family, my parents, my two brothers and my sister and my cat and my two best friends. I know they're out here some, somewhere. I don't, can't see you. Anyway, thank you guys. Thank you, Nada. And for the last category, is Catherine Yassa, script writing. Hello, everyone. I got up, held up by the chair a little bit over there. Thankfully, the light is in my face, so I can't get nervous. Um, a little bit about me, I'm a mathematics senior with a completed writing minor, so I never thought I'd do anything creative again, especially with the last of my undergrad years. Uh, this all started because Sahila and Farida were giving out flyers during assembly, pretty mundane thing, and uh, funnily enough, right before then my professor told me that dialogue was the weakest point I had in my writing, so I decided then and there just to delve into script writing and try as best as I could. Um, I want to thank them so much. I want to thank Dr. Jillian, Dr. Naveen for always guiding me, for their lightheartedness, for being who they are, and for always giving me good advice. I want to thank the girls and the boys who are with me in the group. You set the bar really, really high that I always wanted to persist and create something that I'm proud of. And in the end, I want to thank the author's challenge as well for giving me this opportunity. I'm going to cherish it forever. Thank you for developing this style of writing. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit from my script and I'm going to invite one of my colleagues, Amin Abdel Halim, to read with me. Um, it's a murder comedy. I was always told to write from experience and I have three sister, uh, sisters, so this was just a fight between two sisters and basically they're trying to steal from their third, so bear with me and if you'll let me, I'll just read a little bit of an excerpt with you. And start. Screw Julie and screw the earrings. Wake the hell up, you have a bigger problem. You could go to jail. You mean we? Hell no, I wasn't the one hell-bent on spiting Julie. Well, you're in this whether you like it or not. I may have wanted to get payback for what was ours, but we both needed this. Didn't you need a place to stay? 
a place where you took the lawsuit? I found one. So instead of reasoning with him like a regular lunatic, you decide to go full psycho and bash his head in? Oh, simmer down. A hammer to the head never hurt anyone. It's just a light concussion, that's all. This isn't gonna end well, you know. You have a kidnapped gigolo down there while your kids are asleep upstairs. Look, all we need to do is find a way to shut him up. Jesus, Kemi, you mean kill him? Scene. So, thank you guys so much for making me participate in this. Thank you. That's it. We're done. Thanks, everyone. I think we're done, right? Yep. Cheers. Thank you all. And now we're ready to begin the awards presentation. So I'll ask each award owner to please approach the stage. First for the award for the disciplines, Dr. Ala Adris. Here to present the award for the core course centennial competition, Dr. Agada Oshimi. Also, Dr. Gada Ilshimi will be awarding uh, the winners of the faculty pitch competition. And Dr. Ala Adris will also be awarding uh, those inventors who um, deserve to be recognized. He will also be awarding uh, the research posters. Dr. Anelli El Neni for the Student Entrepreneurship Expo Award. And finally, Dr. Nelly Elneny and Dr. Rami Ali come back to uh, present the awards for the Authors' Challenge. And uh, most importantly, we'd like to invite uh, Provost Abdurrahman to come and present each award with the owners of the awards. This one's the one that works. Right. Oh, that one works too. This works too. If you need it. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for being here for the closing ceremony of the 2019 Research and Creativity Convention. Uh, we are coming to the award part, like a good part of the uh, of the convention. Uh, we, we're starting with the award for the discipline. This is only a one-year-old uh, uh, program, and this is our second year to apply the award for the discipline. Uh, the whole uh, notion of the award for the discipline is just to encourage uh, university disciplines, like departments, to uh, look into uh, having more room for undergraduate research and having better environment for encouraging students to get engaged in research endeavors. So the competition is all about like models and possibilities and structure and what are the chances of getting this award and building something like a better environment for research in the department. So I'm glad to announce that the two competing departments uh, uh, for this award we have actually could not make a differentiation between their level of contribution if they get uh, the award. So uh, the committee have thought that both of them should share the uh, award for the discipline. Those are the Department of the Arts and the Department of Mechanical Engineering. So please welcome the departments for, uh, acknowledge the department of that. Anybody from the Department of the Arts? Uh, which, 
Uh, yeah, we, we will keep the check with the approvals so they can come and claim it. Uh, we'll have now uh, Professor Gada Shimi, Dean Al Shimi, for presenting the uh, core course centennial competition. Uh, the core course centennial competition took place in fall 2018 and awarded faculty for creating an interdisciplinary course that focused on liberal arts learning outcomes and employed student-centered, high-impact teaching practices, including writing, undergraduate research, community-based learning, experiential learning, and innovation. Uh, we, a committee from the different schools selected two winning courses. At the secondary level, a co-designed course by Drs. Holly O'Burl, Assistant Professor of Political Science, and Dr. May Taha, Assistant Professor in the Department of Law, for Introduction to Gender and Sexuality Studies, a Global Perspective. If you could... Yeah. Congratulations. At the capstone level, uh, the winning course designed by Dr. Jehan Osman, Assistant Professor in Graduate School of Education, Empowering the Next Generation Social Entrepreneurship for Education. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, okay, we are now ready to announce the winners for the faculty pitch competition. Uh, are we, we can now display the slide from the control room. Okay, the uh, winners are in first place, we have uh, Maya Nicholas, who got 31% of the votes for her research pitch entitled Deciphering the Role of APP. Congratulations, Maya. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. In second place, Dr. Hassan Azezi for his uh, presentation on optical sensors for detection of toxic metals in water. Is Dr. Azezi here yet? Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, we actually were only planning to present three awards, but we had a tie, 10% of the votes uh, for Dr. Doris Jones and 10% of the 10% uh, for Dr. Ahmed Abdel Latif. So, uh, Dr. Ahmed Abdel Latif, herbal remedies for chronic skin ulcers. Congratulations! Thank you very much. And Dr. Doris Jones for big questions, big data, wicked problems equals quantitative uh, reasoning. I don't think she's here. Thank you. I think the following uh, category of awards is the inventor's recognition. This is not truly an award. Uh, not many people on AUC campus do realize the kind of effort we do to protect our inventions, our ideas, and to try to make an impact with those uh, to the community and hopefully to the economy. So uh, we have several inventors on campus who have not only filed their inventions, but have got granted inventions uh, that we would like to recognize them by uh, handing and presenting a plaque for those inventions. I'd like to call on my colleague Ahmed Elise, who is the director of 
uh, Technology Transfer Office just to give a word of an overview of what we have achieved uh, in invention protection, which is the Technology Transfer Office main job. Thank you. Um, good evening. Um, so, in an attempt to recognize the unique ideas that come from AUC's researchers, the Tech Transfer Office is greatly honored to celebrate um, all its inventors, both faculty and students, who have issued granted patents. Um, the number of patents or granted patents is an established measure for tech transfer as it indicates the degree to which discoveries and inventions made in academic institutions are novel, inventive, and have potential to be transferred to economic uh, uh, effects. Uh, for further industrial and commercial development. Um, so the office has filed a total of 60 patent families to date in more than 10 countries and jurisdictions worldwide, uh, 16 of which have been granted, and today we're going to be awarding 12, so it's 12 families, um, but 16 individual uh, granted patent applications. The TTO actually signed its first license agreement with AUC's first spin-out or startup, Dikimia, in 2013, to commercialize a novel hepatitis C diagnostic solution. And with the launch of the new proof of concept fund, that, that, uh, that aims to accelerate the development of early stage academic discoveries towards commercial investment readiness. Um, and we've actually um, supported about eight to nine uh, cases uh, to date. We anticipate at least three more spin outs and license agreements within the next 12 months. So without further ado, the inventors with granted patent applications that we'd like to award are and as I mentioned their names, please, if you're in the room, uh, come to the stage and we're going to be giving you a plaque. Um, doctors Yahya Ismail Abdullah and Amgad Abdesalam for their invention titled Switch Capacitor Circuit Modifying Voltage on the Indicator of Buck Regulator. Okay, the second invention or the second team is Dr. Naga Hallam and his PhD student Basamat Shaheen for their invention, niobium oxynitride nano and microstructures. Doctors Rania Siam, Hamza Durri, Yasmin Muhammad for their invention, heavy metal resistance esterase. Doctors Amal Al Isawi, Adham Ramadan, Ahmad Abdel Gawad for their invention, a solution blending process for the fabrication of nylon six MMT nan nanocomposites. And unfortunately, we had a glitch, so some of the inventions we did not get it, get plaques in time. So, but we will get them. Yes. Doctors Muhammad Sirri, Andrew Rubin, Muhammad Rifat, and Sharif Sidi, oh, and Muhammad Abdu for their invention, silicon germanium mask for deep silicon etching. I guess they're not here. Okay, so Dr. Ayman Al Aizabi for his two granted patents as the sole inventor for. Number one, methods, systems, and computer readable media for simplified computation of squares and sums of squares of code cross correlation metrics for signal processing. It's a bit of a mouthful. And methods and systems for demodulation, demodulating a multi user single signal using channel decoders for a multiple access communication system. And doctor, if you can stick on, st like, stay on stage for a moment as well. There's a third invention with Dr. Ayman as, an, as a co-inventor. There's one with Dr. Ayman, Muhammad Khairi, Muhammad Abdullah, Muhammad Kashif, 
for their patent method systems and computer readable media for interface minimizing code assignment and system parameter selection for code division multiple access or CDMA networks. And maybe just to note, Dr. Ayman was our first inventor here at AUC. So I, I believe he has the oldest patent at AUC. Okay, and then we have doctors Izzuddin Suleiman, Sharif Sidi, and Mayi Salam, and Ahmed Abdul Aziz for their patent circuitry isolated MEMS antennas, devices, and enabling technology. And last but not least, doctors Hassan Azizi, Ahmed Shahat, and Hassan Hassan for their invention, chemo sensors, compositions, and uses thereof, for which you saw a pitch earlier today. And I think he won the second prize. Second prize, yes. yes. And he's unfortunately not in the room, but he has a few coming up here. So the next one is uh, for doctors Hassan Azizi, Sharif Shawi, Tamir Samir for their invention, detection of nucleic acids using unmodified gold nanoparticles. Actually, and Sharif, if you can stick around, actually, the next one as well includes you. So this is, um, where is it? Dr. Hassan Az Azazi and Sharif Shawi for their invention, dark detection of unamplified hepatitis C virus RNA using un unmodified gold nanoparticles. So, and if you've noticed as well, so these last two inventions or la these last two patents are the subject of our first license agreement with our first spin-off company, Dikimia. And, and finally, this also belongs to Dr. Hassan Azazi and Wissam Sarhan for their invention, biocompatible apitherapeutic nanofibers. Okay, and thank you very much. Oh, is this Wissam? Oh, perfect. Thank you. I think the next category of um, our awards is the research poster competition. And uh, we have three winners. In the first place, we have Hud Al Qadi. Do we have Hoda Al-Qadi? Okay, so you need to come over here for your first, please. And in the second prize, we have Mahmoud Rostum and Tariq Negm. And the third prize goes to Ayad Desouqi, Karim Shafai, Hossam uh, Zahir, uh, Mustafa Saudi, and Omar Hamouda. Hey, hello. So can I just ask how many people would like to be entrepreneurs? Go on, put your hands up high. Okay, good. Because the entrepreneurship ecosystem is booming in Egypt and in the MENA region and certainly across the world. 
AUC is at the forefront of entrepreneurship. We have entrepreneurship courses, we have the AUC Venture Lab, we have an innovation hub, and several other initiatives. One of our initiatives is the Student Entrepreneurship Expo. And this initiative showcases innovative student startups from across all disciplines as part of the AUC Research and Creativity Convention every year. The award is sponsored by Redcon Construction with a 10,000 pound cash prize. So firstly, congratulations to all of the students that took part in this from the groups Paydash, Belediet.com, Urate, Samani, and Filsaria. Just a quick thank you to all of the faculty who were involved in this and my colleagues in the entrepreneurship unit in the School of Business. Thank you to Ahmed Bayoumi from the Deep Tech Lab Manager and Yasmin Nagati from the AUC Venture Lab. And a big, big thank you to Tara El Gamal, the Chairman of Redcon Construction, Huda Mahran, HR Director, and Ala Mohammed, Training Team Leader from Redcon Construction. So, the winning team from the five for the 10,000 pound cash prize, and I hope you will take me and other faculty members for dinner, is Samani. Samani is an application for deaf individuals or those with hearing problems. It hears and alerts, and it's downloadable on mobile phones and smartwatches and operates through the mic with record songs and tones. So before they come on stage, I would like to please welcome Hoda Mahran, HR Director from Redcon Construction. They are our kind sponsors both this year and next year, and we hope you'll bring us some more cash next year. And I'd like to just ask Yasmin Al Khuli from the School of Business. She's a graduate and she's working with the entrepreneurship students and she will present the names of the winning team members. So the winning team members are Mai Atik, Lubna Dia, To Al Khadrawi, Shaima Ghudbin, and Minna Hamid. Right, hello again. So we'll be announcing the winners and the runners-up for the Authors Challenge for this year. Um, and they don't actually know who's won, which is pleasant. Anyway, so for the script writing category, the winner is Catherine Yasa, and the runner-up is Samar Sadallah. Congratulations. It's okay. No, no, it's fine. Uh, the winners for the short story category are Amina Abdel Halim and Maryam Al Bayadi. Congratulations. Okay, and for spoken word, the winner is Farida Gohar.
And the runner-up, Sara Zaleta. Well done. Okay, and for the podcasting category, our winner is Nada Nagib. And finally, for our graphic novel category, the winner is Kinda Al Marakabi. And the runner up, who cannot unfortunately be with us today because she has an exam, is uh, Mina Al Suwafi. Well done to everyone that took part in the Authors Challenge and come back with some great writing stories. Yes. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite Provost Tehab Abdurrahman back to the podium for closing remarks. Wow. When I uh, had the idea of the author challenge, actually I did not uh, come up with the name, but I uh, asked Rami and Nelly to have an initiative to enhance our students' writing. And they came up with the idea, and I really did not uh, think that we will be here today seeing all those amazing students uh, presenting their work. I'm really impressed. Thank you all for being part of the author challenge. And, and I hope that you, next year you're going to be mentors for new students. Rami and Nelly, thank you so much for e your effort and time. Good afternoon. Let me start by con congratulating all of our winners and patent recipients. I'm also pleased to see such remarkable achievements by our faculty and students. I also want to thank the dozens of organizers who have spent hundreds of hours over the past year planning and organizing all of the sessions held over the past week. This, this has been an exciting research and creativity convention. We started off with our keynote address from Dr. Muhammad Ghanim, and we are ending with record numbers here today. We introduced audience participation to select the winner of the faculty pitch competition, and we were treated we were treated by a, to a talk by our own alumnus, Ahmed Al Gandur, Al Dahih, Al Mus Sabikan. <laughs> In between, we saw increased level, levels of participation, not only from our faculty and the students putting themselves out there to present their research, but also from our wider community, taking the time to support and encourage our researchers, inventors, innovators, and creators. I look forward to the next year RCC, and I hope you will mark, you all mark your calendars for April 4 to 9, 2020. Please mark your calendar. We'll meet again next year. I urge you to participate. I ask our faculty to encourage our students to all, at all levels of study to engage in research and creative endeavors and to participate in next year's event. I cannot end my remarks, but, to th but without thanking uh, Dr. Ala Idris for his, and his team for the effort has, that has been put into the RCC. Thank you all, and see you next year. Thank you. Thank you.